Hi you guys, welcome to today's video. I'm Nitha and today we're gonna to be talking about how to master self-control. Yes, this is a very big topic and the reason why is because mastering your self-control, it is so, so important and not everyone knows the tools in order to actually build self-control. It's not like they teach this in school. So this is gonna be your mini lesson. I'm gonna share seven secrets on how you can master self-control right now. And you can start using this even after this video is done. So let's just head straight into it. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to strengthen your mind. One of the best ways to do this is with meditation. It's by developing your mental strength. Now, there have been research studies and studies after studies that actually show that meditation actually increases your focus, it increases your attention span, and it also increases your overall longevity. Now, it is no wonder that philosophers and saints and gurus and yogis for years have been using the power of meditation to quiet their mind and to actually build consistency and focus. Okay, you guys, so the entire idea of being able to meditate and master your focus, your ability to just go inward, maybe for five minutes or 10 minutes, and then maybe you wanna increase it to 15 minutes or 20 minutes daily, this is so powerful. And then really being able to master self-control by maybe even doing a silent retreat or a silent meditation. Now, this actually can be something that you do for five days or 10 days. There's something that's called a Vipassana retreat. Yes, Vipassana retreat, where people who do this retreat actually do not speak and are meditating for 10 to 12 hours a day for 10 days. Can you think about that? Think about not speaking to anybody for 10 days, for 10 hours a day, but you're with other people meditating. For me, I think that would, I would go nuts. I would go bananas. It would be crazy. But the amount of healing and the amount of things that happen as a result of people doing this type of meditation, because people are building that endurance of silence, of not talking, is so commendable. And it's definitely a hard feat. So number two, you might wanna go ahead and do some self-reflection. Deconstruct what some of your limiting beliefs are. For example, there is a period of time where I thought there was no way I could fast for three days. And there are these things that people were talking about like juice fasts and juice cleanses. And I thought there's no way I would totally be hungry I actually put that hindrance on myself that I wouldn't be able to do this or I would need food at every hour of the day in order to thrive. Mm -hmm. eh, no go. That's totally a lie that I was telling myself. Or for some of you, there's no way that you can finish that project that's due in a week. Or maybe for some of my clients, it's, I don't think I'd be able to write that book. Why do you think that is? What are some of these blocks? Why would that be a hindrance? Now, attempt to dive deeper in this reflection. And the best way to do this is to set aside maybe 15 minutes every day. Yup, your pen and paper. When you have writing time to release these thoughts, and just like any habit, this one can actually get better if you are consistent. Number three, create boundaries for yourself. Now, boundaries are so important. And the reason why they're so important is that they keep you protected. They're like that invisible shield that protects you from the things you want, from the things you desire. And it also gives you the ability to say no to things that don't serve you. Maybe it's people that you don't really wanna be around, but it also gives you that self-control to say that is not for you or you are not gonna tolerate somebody speaking to you in a certain way. Those are the examples of boundaries. And what it does is, is it sets limitations or maybe even rules. And I know some people don't really like that word, but those rules are how people should be treating you and you should be treating yourself. So boundaries for yourself could look a little bit like 
Maybe the time that you put your phone away at night or the time in the day where you stop checking your emails or you only check your emails. Or maybe the time in a day where you are actually keeping yourself accountable for your daily exercise. Or maybe that you're only limiting yourself to a couple times a week where you Netflix and chill. Boundaries are so important because they keep you focused. Number four, have a routine that actually helps keep you organized and productive. Now, a routine is huge, especially for those of you who maybe work from home or perhaps for whatever reason, now you're actually working, you're working from home or things have shifted a little bit in your livelihoods. So if you're gonna actually work out in the morning, that's your routine. If you're gonna actually commit to that yoga practice in the evening, add that to your routine. If you're gonna add a little bit more writing or reading, make sure that's a routine and that's a habit that you can stick with. What if the routine is just set and you actually are able to follow that every single day? That is mastering your self-control. Number five, observe your food. Yes, observe your food. Remember what I shared with you a little bit earlier about my biggest fear about being able to do that juice fast or um, limit my, my intake of food because I thought I was gonna starve? Well, things actually changed when I decided to commit to doing a three-day food fast, which meant that I was only doing juices or I was only drinking juices for those three days. And what happened during that time was the first day, I was a little bit tired. I mean, I had been used to eating those three meals a day and a couple of different snacks. But what happened towards the rest of those two days were fascinating. I noticed that I was more clear-headed and I didn't really feel hungry. And it was bananas because it was basically going against everything that I learned to believe from when I was younger. And so not only that, by the time I reached the third day, it was incredible because I was, I had so much energy. I had more energy sometimes than I felt that when I was actually eating three meals a day, I actually built some mental strength in that because I was able to recognize that actually your mind is everything and in the thoughts that you feed your mind is absolutely everything. So you might wanna be careful with how you are observing your thoughts. Not that I'm saying that you need to do a juice fast tomorrow. (laughs) Totally not saying that. But what you actually can do is the next time that you sit down and have a meal, why not practice a little bit more mindfulness? Number six, do something every day that gets you out of your box. So yes, I'm asking you to have courage. Do something every day that frightens you. And for some of you, it might mean maybe going live on social media and not caring what anybody thinks, but you're actually having that awkward silence or maybe going out in public and having a conversation with a complete stranger and actually embracing those moments of silence. So how can you actually test yourself? How can you actually step outside the box every day and see what you can actually test yourself in doing? And maybe in doing that, it actually strengthens and helps you master your self-control. Number seven, detach yourself from the things that have power and control over you. If you're a smoker that wants to quit smoking, Maybe you want to notice how often do you have those cravings? When do you have those cravings? And what actually happens when you deny yourself that cigarette? That The same thing goes for somebody who's maybe addicted to sugary treats or cakes and cupcakes. Notice what happens when you don't give in to your cravings. But notice also what happens when that thought is in the back of your mind constantly. Guess what? You're constantly thinking about that then. What if instead of trying to control those thoughts, 
you actually embrace it and you just let it go. And what if instead of you fighting those thoughts that keep coming into your mind, you just simply let it be and you experience the feelings that actually come with it. And it's almost like you're training your mind to experience the feeling of wanting and that desire and that feeling of not being able to give in to that craving. But actually what happens in your body? What sensations do you notice? Where does that actually live? Is it in your gut? Is it in your chest? Where does it actually live? And how long does it actually last for? It's kind of that example that if you run your hand under ice cold water, how long can you keep your hand under ice cold water until that numbingness and that numbing sensation actually goes away. It's why some people like to even take ice baths to help train their mind and to help build their self-control. There you have it, you guys. Seven secrets to help you master your self-control. I want you to try at least two of these steps and see what happens for you. Now, as always, if you've loved this video, if you've really enjoyed this video, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. And if there is anyone that needs this information, go ahead and share this video. I will see you guys next time. Take care.